So what we're going to do now is work out some problems using either the Bernoulli or the energy equation. But pretty much I'm always going to write the energy equation down and we can always simplify it to be the Bernoulli equation. So here we have a nozzle. So this is just a nozzle. And uh, we're using this nozzle in a power plant or something to um, accelerate the flow before it goes to the turbine. So we have flow at the inlet here that's about, you know, very negligible, very small velocity. We have the pressure, though, very high at the inlet. And what we'd like to do through this nozzle is convert that pressure energy into flow energy by the time it exits. So what we do is we shrink the diameter port here down um, to be uh, small, okay? And by doing that, we can convert some of this low velocity flow into a very high velocity flow. But we know through our energy conservation relationship that we're, since we're sacrificing or converting this energy from a high pressure, it has to go, energy has to go somewhere. So the velocity has to increase and the corresponding pressure has to decrease. So what I've went ahead and done so far uh, is I've selected these points, okay? And that's one of the most important parts to do when we're doing one of these analyses is selecting these points. Once we have those points, we can start going through here and we can start making cancellations based on what we know of the problem. So here we know that velocity at point one is about zero. We know that the height difference between points one and two, so the height difference between these two points is zero, right? So there's no potential energy change between the two points. We don't have a pump in our line between points one and two, so we'll cancel this. We do have a pressure at point one though, a high pressure, and we also have a high pressure at point two. Velocity at point two, we don't know, so we have to keep that term there also. We do not have a turbine in between points one and two. And we're gonna assume that the flow in this case is frictionless. Okay, so we have frictionless flow, no HL. So essentially what we've done is we've simplified our energy equation to be P1 over rho G equals to P2 over rho G plus V2 squared over 2G. So you can see here, we can cancel out these. Every term has a gravity. If we multiply by gravity, gravity should all go away. So we don't have to mess with that. Okay. Now let's give this some numbers. So P1 is uh, 800 kilopascals. So we could say that's 800,000. Uh, and let's say the working fluid that we have is water, okay? So let's say this is water. We know that the density of water is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed, okay? Pressure at point two is going to be uh, given. It's 100,000 kilo or pascals. Density the, of the working fluid is water. V2, we do not know. And we can solve this equation. Let's see, what does this come out to be? 2 times 700, so V2 is equal to the square root of 1400. or V2 is 37.4 meters per second. All right, so this is, um, this is the velocity 
we could expect coming out of that nozzle. Now, note I would like to make here is that this velocity, remember, we assumed was frictionless. And we assume that we had no heat transfer. So it was adiabatic. Okay. And uh, we made some other assumptions too. Basically what I'm trying to say is that this is the maximum velocity that we could have. And this is kind of a theoretical check that you could have. So theoretical for the actual flow in the system. So if you were to look at this system and you were to measure some, so if let's say you went to your company and you measured the velocity coming out of here, you would have to, or you could kind of know what the theoretical limit of that flow coming out of that nozzle is. It wouldn't be, uh, you know, it shouldn't be higher than 37.4 meters per second since the uh, we made these assumptions. So you all, it gives you a baseline and something to check with and also a design tool for you guys to use as you're looking at these type of problems. So let me do another one. So let's say we have water here again. So we have water. Uh, in, it's a, in a pressurized tank, okay? So this time the pr tank is pressurized. Okay, so you have a pressurized tank, it's pushing down on that water surface, and it's exiting this nozzle uh, with a certain velocity. Uh, the pressure in the top of the tank is 250 kilopascals, and the pressure at the exit is just atmospheric pressure. Okay, so it's a little bit higher than atmospheric pressure here. Actually, quite a bit higher. <laughs> Okay, and we have some other properties here. So what do we need to do? Again, we're going to start with our energy equation and the different terms in the energy equation. So at pressure 1, we do have a pressure 1. We can't cancel that out. Velocity at 1, now this is an interesting note that we're going to make. We're going to say that velocity here, first thing we need to do is we need to pick our points. So I'm going to pick my point 1 right at the surface of this water and point two right at the exit here of the stream. So at point one we can say that the velocity is approximately zero. We know that it's going down, okay? We know that this is moving down with time. But we're going to say that the velocity of one is much less than the velocity at point two. So therefore, we're going to say that velocity at 1 is approximately 0. And that makes our analysis a lot easier. And it doesn't sacrifice much accuracy as far as uh, the final answer is concerned. So Z1, we do have, we have some potential energy associated with this water. We do not have a pump in our line between points 1 and 2. Pressure at point 2 is atmospheric. We'll keep that. Velocity at point 2 we do have. We do not have an elevation at point 2. This We're going to say this is our zero point. We do not have a turbine uh, between points 1 and 2. And again we're going to assume no loss. All right, so P1, let's look at the pressure at point one. So the pressure at point one is 250,000. The density of the water 
at point one, right? So we're interested in the density of our working fluid is 1,000 times 9.81. Our elevation here is 2.5 meters. Pressure at point two is atmospheric divided by 1,000 times 9.81. Velocity 2 is what we're trying to find. And that's it. Okay. So we can easily now solve for velocity at point two. And velocity at point two, using our Bernoulli equation or our energy equation analysis, 8.68 meters per second. And again, remember that some of the assumptions we made is we had no losses, okay? So this would represent kind of a maximum or theoretical limit to how fast this velocity could come out of this tank. Nevertheless, it provides us with a good reference uh, point and a design tool to use if we're trying to build something. Now finally, the last problem I want to work has to do with the pipe bursting. So let's say we have some oil. Well, let's see. Oil is black, right? So we'll have oil. Oh, no, no, let me, let's say water, sorry. We can use whatever fluid, but let's just use, so we have water. Okay. Uh, the water uh, is passing through this pipe, so water. We have water passing through a pipe. And the pipe burst, so it's winter. and the pipe bursts, okay? Now all of a sudden we have all of this water pouring out through uh, this hole here in the pipe. And it goes up 42 meters. The question in this problem is what is the pressure inside of the pipe? So what is the pressure inside of the pipe. That's our question. Okay. So the pressure inside the pipe depends obviously or the height that this water column has exploded and gone up 42 meters depends on how pressurized that flow in the pipe is. So let's go ahead and uh, calculate what that pressure is. Now the first point, the first thing we need to do is select our points. So obviously I'll select point two up here where the velocity is zero. That makes our analysis much easier. And point one I'm going to select right underneath inside the pipe since that's where we want to find the pressure right underneath where the flow starts coming out of the pipe. So I'll just right underneath there, that hole. Pressure at one then, we don't know. So since we are considering that the velocity is about zero, compar comparatively speaking to the jet velocity where I selected point one, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this out. I'm gonna set our point one as a zero point. I'm going to say we don't have a pump between points one and two because we don't. Pressure at two, I'm going to say is atmospheric pressure. Okay, since it just the pipe burst. The pipe burst and it was released into the atmosphere. Okay. And one atmosphere here just represents um, our regular atmospheric pressure that we could expect. Velocity two, since the vo water velocity hit a 
uh, accelerates, it goes down to zero and starts to decline at point two. I'm going to say velocity at point two is zero. Z2 we do have. We have a certain height. We do not have a turbine. And we have, we're gonna, I'm going to say no losses again. Okay. So what's our equation here that we're going to deal with? P1 over rho g is equal to P2 over rho g plus Z2. So obviously we could rewrite this as P1 is equal to P2 plus rho g z2. Pressure at 1, we don't know. Pressure at 2 is atmospheric. We'll just say it's 100, um, 100,000 plus rho, which is 1,000, g, which is 9.81. And the height of this is 42 meters. So, pressure at 1, absolute pressure at 1, is 512 kilopascals. So this is absolute. What if we wanted to know gauge pressure? Well, we just subtract the atmospheric pressure. This would be 412 kilopascals. Okay, and what do you guys think? Do you guys think that the pressure would actually have to be higher or lower in this tank in this pipe to get it to go up in real life application well the pressure would have to be higher right because when again we're assuming that there are no losses in this flow so if there's no losses then um, we're going to require more energy to send this flow up but at least you could get a quick calculation your boss wants to know what the pressure is. You could get a quick calculation uh, to determine what the press approximate pressure is inside of that pipeline, so that at least you know what you're dealing with, and you know you would need to do you would have more pr a little bit more pressure than that in order to overcome some of the losses. So we'll start our final chapter next in our next lecture where we talk about conservation of momentum. <laughs>